Hello children welcome back how are you doing you must be doing good right have you all done the work that i gave yesterday simple assignments but very interesting assignments we have discussed so far about the monkey and the trees it was a fantastic story the gardener was upset because he was not given a day off to go and watch the parade the procession with his friends and have fun he thought and thought at a length he didn't get any idea but suddenly there was an idea in his mind what was the uh, what was the idea will anybody tell the answer what did the gardener get an idea what was the idea that came in the mind of the gardener the gardener thought and the idea was that he wanted to ask all the monkeys to come to his garden what are the plants so that he can be relieved he can be uh, away from his duties and go and watch the entire parade of the king when he communicated the same to the monkeys the big monkey said okay yes i am going to do what you say i will take care with my team of this beautiful garden you can go and enjoy the parade the festival the procession with all your friends and family members you need not to be worried you, you don't have to be uh, you don't have to be thinking all this we will take care of that so hearing this the gardener became very excited and happy he went with his friends and family members there was a beautiful procession and parade by the king he enjoyed he had fun he had done everything he wished to he wanted to but what was the sight greeted him the next morning i asked the question the last day what was the scene the scene was so sad the entire beautiful garden was destroyed by the monkeys why the monkeys destroyed did they destroy the garden intentionally no they didn't it was because of the request made by the gardener they did their duties the big monkey instruct the little one to remove the roots provide more water for the longer roots provide less water for the shorter roots this way each and every single plant was uprooted and thrown and that is the reason entire garden was destroyed dear kids then after seeing this i had asked you two questions what was the two questions do you remember my question was this you if, if you are the gardener if you yourself is the gardener when you have seen the garden which you have been maintaining sincerely and looking after the garden so beautifully if you are in the position of the gardener you see the garden is now dead the garden is being destroyed the beauty of the garden is disappeared vanished how do you feel if you are the gardener will you call each and every monkey and punish them or how do you react or do you realize that it was your mistake to call the monkeys and hand over your duty do you think you are silly or do you think the monkeys were silly what was the answer what answer did you give but this questions this set of questions that i have asked to all of you but now the lesson is completed we have some interesting grammar interesting language games interesting language components and that is what i am going to discuss with you all today 
in my session. I am Dhananja, your English teacher. Keep watching this session. You will have answers to questions for your doubts. Look at the heading. What is the heading? Let's make some new words. There are six words to my to the left. Six words. I just read them out. It is there in your textbook. You can see them later. Resist, attend, confide, exist, susp, exp. So now we have to add a word to make the meaningful words. Resist, if I add A and C, it becomes resistance. And like that, if I add attend plus A and C, it is attendance. If I add E and C for confide, it becomes confidence. In the same way, the word exist, if it is added by E and C, it's existence. And sus suspense, ex expense. Dear kids, some words can be modified, can be made different by adding A N C E or E N C E. So these are the six examples. Resistance, confidence, attendance, existence, suspense, expense. Not just these words, any word or there are many words by adding suffix. Suffix means adding something to the end of a word. Adding some letters, adding a word at the end of a word is called as suffix. You must have heard suffix and prefix in your 7th standard or maybe in the 8th standard by your teachers. Prefix means a letter or letters or word added at the beginning of a word. If there is a word like complete, example is complete. If you want to add prefix, prefix means adding one word, adding letters to the main word that is complete. If I want to add a prefix, I, N, complete, incomplete. The word meaning of incomplete is opposite of complete. Complete, I have completed the notes. For example, Madam, I have completed the notes. And in your class, there is one more friend. He, he has not completed his notes. And he can say, Madam, my notes is incomplete. My notes is incomplete. Incomplete means not complete. That is the reason I am telling you, my dear kids, Prefix is a word or letters to be added at the beginning of a word, but suffix is something which is added at the end of a word. In this way, we have resistance, attendance, confidence, existence, suspense and expense. Lot of words, kids. And you have to know how to make these words in your own sentences. Resistance, for example. We all have heard about COVID-19, the coronavirus. The immunity has become the most spoken word. Resistance means the ability to fight back. To abil the ability to fight back. I have got a good resistance, so I am very healthy that way. How can you use the word attendance? It's very common. Attendance means you are present. Some of your friends have not come to school. They are absent. Attendance means being present in the class or showing up somewhere, being apparent, being present. Uh, how can I use this word attendance in my own sentence? Attendance of class 8 is full. Attendance of class 7 is full. The attendance of class 9 is 50, like that. How can I use the word confidence? Confidence is the ability of a person. You have the ability, willingness, confidence. The power of mind is called as confidence. I am confident to speak English. I have confidence in English language. Like that, you are also having confidence in learning. Every one of you have the capacity and confidence of learning English language, how to listen, how to read, how to speak and how to write. 
I am very sure you are going to be very confident children in coming days. Suspense. You know some stories have got some suspense. You don't know what is the next scene. You don't know what happens next. You don't know where is the heroine. You don't know what happens to hero. It's all suspense. Something you want to know, but you don't know, but you want to know. That is called a suspense. Uh, how to use this word in a sentence? Uh, I like uh, movies which have got suspense, like that. The next word is expense. Expense means expenditure. That means the money you spend. For example, your father has given you 50 rupees and that 50 rupees you make the expenditure on buying a chocolate. That is the expense of buying a chocolate is 50 rupees. You got? I believe all these words. Let's go next uh, uh, important language game. Hmm, here is the important concept. What is the concept? Complete each sentence below with the word opposite in the meaning. So now we are going to see how to make opposite words or what are opposite words? Let me tell you what are opposite words. Opposite words are the words which you have got. There is a word. Entire meaning is to be different or opposite. For example, like is a word. I like mangoes. Opposite of word like is dislike. I can say this. I like mangoes. My friend Hassan dislikes mangoes. You understand? Like, dislike. I am happy, but my brother is unhappy. You, go, you are getting my point? I like white shirt, but my father likes black shirts. Opposite in meaning, opposite words. And these are also called as antonyms. Let's see what you can on the screen and it is also there in your textbooks. The word is underlined. To that word we have to find out. Opposite that I have given the answer in the bracket. Look at that. A victory comes. A victory sometimes is worse than defeat. A victory is worse than defeat. You are getting the point? Victory means trump. Win. Conquer. Gain. All these words are synonyms. Victory. For example, you are playing a cricket match against the other team from other school. You want to win the match. If you win the match, what is the result of the other team? They are defeated. Victory, defeat. Victory, defeat. Victory means winning. Defeat means losing. Recently, you must have watched a lot of uh, cricket. So, India versus England or any other teams, one team has to win the match, the other team has to get the defeat. Okay, let's go to the second one. The construction of new building takes a long time. Their destruction is easy. Look at the word construction, destruction. Construction, destruction. Construction means build. Anything, for example, in your home, your mother prepares delicious food. Rice, chapati, curry, sweet, payasam, everything. It takes two to three hours to prepare. But eating all of them, how much time do you need? Do you need three hours to eat? It takes hardly 10 to 15 minutes. So what I am trying to tell you is, doing something good, creating something, building something takes time. But... Destroying it takes no time. So, construction, destruction. Construction, destruction. The example of uh, destruction is that we have uh, learnt in the same lesson. All the monkeys destroyed the entire garden. The destruction of the garden made by the monkeys was being seen by the gardener. This way we can use. Well, uh, let's move for the next one. The inferior, superior. What is the sentence? This cloth is not inferior, but superior. What is the meaning of inferior and superior? Inferior means of low quality. 
something of low content something of cheap quality inferior for example uh, if you buy something on the street with less amount that the product is inferior product if somebody says 10 rupees you can buy a pair of chappals do you think that 10 rupees chappal will be very good quality no it is inferior quality low quality but superior quality means something that is of great quality something that is of very good quality for example if you buy anything giving good amount of money a something for example if you have a shirt if you have a pen if the pen is uh, used for many months then you say the pen is of superior quality you understand my point superior means a good quality one then let's go for the next one life is full of comforts and discomforts comfort is one word opposite of comfort is discomfort comfort means being relaxed getting everything you want just being happy but discomfort means it is the opposite of you understanding staying in home is comfortable due to the covid around one year you have stayed in a home i think now you must be exhausted and bored comfortable you have been comfortable in the home but is it comfortable to go in the desert desert is a place where lot of sand lot of heat that you can observe there is very uh, discomfortable uncomfortable like that let's go for the next grammar point so far you have understood antonyms the opposite words like that there are many number of opposite words black white tall short heavy light accept reject give borrow lend love hate large small take give question answer all these things there are many number of words which are called opposite of words now let's go for the next one mm look at this express what would your action be the correct word next to each of sentence so there are some sentences i think you are going to enjoy this language game look at the sentence and what is your reaction how do you behave let's go for the first one you forget to do your homework suppose your mathematics teacher has given you homework and after having gone back home you have enjoyed so much that you didn't complete his homework and next day when you come back to school when math teacher is asking you to show the homework that you have forgotten to do how would you feel worried is it correct if the teacher is very strict and disciplined don't you worry because you have not done the homework exactly that's worried feeling so can you use this worry in different situations when will you use this word worry in different situation for example if you have lost the bus you are worried if you have lost your pen you are worried if you have lost 100 rupees given by your father as pocket money you are worried if you have not done homework you are worried if you have not prepared well for the examinations you are worried this is the kind of emotion let's see the second one second one is someone loses your pen someone loses your pen for example you have given your favorite pen to your friend to use to write and that friend misplaces or keeps the pen somewhere and the pen is lost how do you feel irritated you are irritated it's common right if i am taking your pen if i am taking your notebook and i say that i am going to use your notebook and after some time i say oh my dear friend i have lost your notes do you feel good no you feel irritated exactly even somebody asks me to give my pen or to give my anything if they don't return to me i feel irritated then next let's go for the third one you have nothing to do what does it mean that means you are you are given a day off for example uh any festival national festival any local festival or any other reason for example recently so many days months we have sat at home for because of covid 19 
So you have nothing to do at home. You are not supposed to read. You are not going to write. You are not going to do any homework. You are not going to do any assignment. Ha having no work at hand, having no work in hand, do you feel excited and happy? No. One or two days it is good. Maybe for weeks, maybe for months. You may feel very happy having no work hand. Just eating, sleeping, enjoying. But my dear students, now you must have experienced continuously this will not give you happiness. You feel bored. That is the reason you have nothing to do. You are bored. You get it? Let's go for the fourth one. What is that? Your favorite actor is coming to your city. What is your reaction? For example, you are a fan of Darshan, you are a fan of Sudeep, you are a fan of Salman Khan, you are a fan of uh, Mumuti, you are a fan of Mohanlal, you are a fan of anyone. Suddenly he is coming to your city. How do you feel? You feel excited, right? Yes, of course, even I feel. If I am going to meet Rajnikan tomorrow, I will be very excited because he is my favorite hero. Do you like him? It's a personal choice. You may, you may not. So the feeling is called as excited. Okay, not just the favorite actor, if you are liking Dhoni, if you are liking Sachin Tendulkar, if you are liking uh, Mary Combe, if you are liking uh, uh, any athlete, any sports star, you feel excited. Next one. What is the next one? You have done well in your test. For example, there is a unit test, there is a semester, you have done everything well in your examination. How do you feel? You feel happy. You feel excellent. You feel totally happy because you have given your best. You prepared well for the exam. You wrote the exam well. And you are so happy. The, perform the performance from your side is fantastic. And results will also be equally good. So dear kids, these are some of the very few kind of uh, emotions. But there are large, there are a lot of, the list is going to be very big. But that's it for now. We are going to have the next grammar component. What is that? Hmm. Give one word for the followings. So there will be a big statement, but followed by only one word. For example, a person who reports events for a newspaper was present at the meeting. Who is going to give the reports? For example, someone in someone teaches in your class. Who is that? Teacher. Someone who cooks the food. Who is that? The cook. Someone who is driving a bus. Who is he? Is a driver. Like that. All these examples. So answers, we are, we are going to find it later. The people who were watching the show cheered loudly. Who are they? People who were watching the show cheered loudly. So people who are watching a show, people who are watching a match, people who are watching a movie, they yelled, they shouted loudly, cheered loudly. Who are they called? They are called what? That answer we are going to see later. But you can make it a guess. The next one, the people who are listening to the speaker sat quietly. The people who are listening to the speaker sat quietly. And what these people are called? That answer we are going to see the next. The fourth one, after the attack, there were very few people who are survived. After the attack, anywhere, in news you must have seen a lot of attacks being done by the terrorists. Enemies, you know. But uh, in the attack, many people die, lose their lives, but everybody doesn't die. At least few people, handful people are survived. What are those people called? Just one word, that answer we are going to see later. But now the last one, every year India is visited by many foreign people who travel for pleasure. So people who come to India for travel, the people who come for India, the people who come and stay here and enjoy, who are they? Let's see the answer for all this five. Here is the answer. The one who reports is called reporter, news reporter, Kannada newspaper reporter, Tamil newspaper reporter, print media reporters, electronic media reporters, social media reporters. You understand? So report, one who is reporting. Spectators. If you watch a cricket match live by sitting in the stadium, you are a spectator. If you have gone with your friends to watch a movie, you are a spectator. Spectator is one who sees, shows movies, live actions and enjoys, is a spectator. Then the next one is audience. Audience are some people who listen, 
you are all on my audience now i am teaching you a english lesson and you are seeing me you are listening me you are my audience you understand the next one survivors the attack was made lot of people died but still few people luckily survived and those people are called as survivors and lot of country people come to india visit and enjoy what are they called they are all tourists if you go with your family if you go with your friends to america europe for fun or pleasure then you become tourist let's go for the next language component we have understood the lesson now we have to quickly say me yes the statement is true statement is false the king's cook could not go to the parade yes it is true the gardener planned to ask the monkeys to water the trees true the monkeys refused to help the gardener mm, no false the mm, trees with long roots were able to, uh, trees with long roots were to be given less water no 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 wrong false the last one the gardener saw the gardener saw that every tree had been pulled by, pulled up by the roots yes this is true so now you got the answers what is this true what is the false let's go for the next one very important one let's learn about numbers numbers means my dear kids i'm i'm going to tell you very briefly there are two numbers singular plural one is singular more than one is plural you understand in uh, regional language there are some differences but in english how to make singular nouns to plural nouns it's very important look at the one by one the thieves stole our watches thief t h i e f any word in english is ending with f or e f while changing to plural remove f or f e add v e s same example is there t h i e v s the thief stole our watches if the word is ending with c h listen carefully if a singular word is ending with c h add e s like that next one the valley the dash wa valley were full of dash the answer is the valleys valley is a singular valleys are plural valley word is ending with y but before y there is a vowel vowel e so you don't have to change just add yes were full of monkeys even the word monkey is a singular monkey but you how to say lo lot of monkeys what is the change in the spelling rule if y is preceded by e do not change it just add s heroes the dash rode on their dash pony the heroes rode on their ponies hero again a singular plural is heroes just add yes because uh, it's very important you have to add es because o is oval preceded by a consonant r so add es the next one pony p o n y y is the last letter preceded by a consonant n so you have to remove y and add i e s likewise the wolves attack the calves the women hid their babies babies b a b y b a b i e s because y is preceded by consonant b the women hid their babies and children in the bush let's go for the next one so this i have this is the answer i have given these are the some of the rules how to make singular to plural yes fill in the following using has and have our school our school has 12 classrooms a headmistress has a separate room for herself do you have do you have a library in your school how many students does your school have what is this has and have let me tell you has to be used after a singular subject have to be used after subject in plural this is all i just wanted to make clear to you so let's see this some of the examples asha and anit plural subject is plural asha and anit have chocolates saying asha and anit has chocolates is wrong the tree in our compound has so many branches our library has thousands of books 
I have five different books with me now. Look at it carefully. I is a singular subject, but it is an exception. Only you cannot say I has. It is still I have. Raghav has composed the song. Next, spoken English role play. This is an assignment for you. There is a con. You have to imagine and creatively create a conversation between. You should be in the role of a gardener. How do you converse? How do you speak? How do you build a dialogue? between yourself and the monkeys that you have to imagine and write let's go the last one in this chapter writing a notice write out a notice to be pinned up on the notice board asking the owner of to contact you something in your school is misplaced and you have got it you want to give them back write a notice this is the format of a notice on the top you write found what is the matter it is hereby to bring to your kind attention that while cleaning the classroom a bunch of keys found it is with me the owner is requested to contact the class teacher that means writing a notice is very simple you want to communicate a message to all the students of your school that a bunch of keys was found while cleaning the classroom and who the who is the owner of the keys the bunch of keys to belong to whom that person has to contact the class teacher Please note this. So with this, I am your English teacher Dhananjay. I would like to finally say goodbye. We have discussed so much in this today. I hope you are going to recall and do the homework, read and try to enjoy all these things. Thank you so much for watching me. Tomorrow I will join you with interesting topic. Take care. Bye bye. Yes, sir. Yes, teacher. That's it, ma'am.